Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video we're going to be talking about engraving stainless steel. Let's get into it. For this video I'm going to be using my Epilogue Fusion Galvo G100. It is a 60 watt MOPA laser which will allow me to engrave the stainless steel directly this does not utilize any kind of marking spray or anything like that. I am engraving the bare metal exactly like it is, which is the beauty of a fiber laser. To start off, I'm gonna be doing three types of engraving. First is going to be more of a polish. The second is going to be more of an annealing black color. And then the third one is going to be an etch, which has a little bit more depth. First up, if you have no idea where to start with settings or anything like that, and you don't have my exact machine, I highly encourage you to check out the video I did on settings. In order to prepare for this video, you see that I ran a lot of tests. So I used the grid generator that Epilogue has in its software. You'll see that I tried it on both sides. I did use a thicker stainless steel for this because if you tend to bend through, it'll warp or bend, things like that. But you'll see it took me a lot of different tries to finally get some tests where I thought that I would get the best looks for those three processes. All of that to say that it took a really long time to find some settings along with talking with some people. It's not as easy as a CO2 laser to figure out settings. The Galvo is a lot more complicated. There are a lot more factors and therefore it is a lot more difficult to find settings that will work for what I wanted to do. Definitely utilize that grid generator. It will help you a ton and it will give you some quick results. I will say that make sure you are testing it on thicker metal because you don't want to end up burning through it or warping it while you are testing. The other thing that I wanna point out along the way is when you are doing testing, just because it works on a thicker metal that is from this batch of 304 stainless steel does not mean that it will work on this thinner stainless steel that is also 304 stainless steel. You could end up getting a different result because there's different surface finishes, different material makeups, different batches of metal. There's a lot of variety. Just like if you're laser engraving wood on a CO2 laser and you get different grain looks and different results each time you do something, same kind of mentality applies here. So don't assume that because it worked on this 304 stainless steel that it's going to work on this 304 stainless steel. Before I go showing you a final result, I wanted to show you some of the tests that I did with polish versus anneal versus the etch process. And I wanna highlight where I personally messed up along the way because it happens it's part of testing, it's part of experimenting, and you shouldn't be afraid to be learning all of this stuff. You will make mistakes, you will end up throwing out material, you're going to have to burn to learn. So if you want to engrave one thing, you might wanna order two or three of that thing so that you can really make sure you get your settings dialed in. This one is a fantastic example of where I messed up. This is a test that I did using settings that I had on the bottle opener that was thicker and I tried to apply it to this very thin card that is stainless steel as well. So this card right here is 0 0.02 inches thick. It is 304 stainless steel. It is pretty thin for what I was trying to do. You can see that the polish turned out pretty well, but during the annealing where it kind of goes black, one, it didn't really engrave as black as it did on the bottle opener. And two, it started to move and shift the card, which is why this pumpkin looks kind of messed up. And then I did the etch process and that one heated up the card so much that it actually warped. So you can see where it bends. That's not supposed to happen. And if you look at the back of the card, it just burned right through part of the card. So there's a good example of how I messed up while I was trying to test this out and the card shifted. I didn't use a thick enough piece of material to try to do what I was doing. Etching a card that's this thick probably will not work 
at all. It's gonna heat up too much, it's gonna end up warping the metal, it's gonna end up shifting and moving and probably burning through it. I might have gotten through with the annealing if I had kind of surrounded the card with anchors, for lack of a better word, to make sure it couldn't move because it didn't actually burn through during the annealing process. It did that during the etching process. If you're gonna be using cards, I'll put a link in the description below to a thicker version of this stainless steel card that you can work with. I would not recommend doing it with this thinner 0.02 type of card or even 0.04. I would try to get that 0.08 or thicker. The intent of a polish is that it's going to do that bright white type finish when it is engraving. The point of annealing is more of that black, subtle mark that it does. It will engrave the surface of the material, but it's not gonna be super deep. It's gonna be kind of the same surface finish almost, or surface depth as the polish is, but it will be a darker color. And then you have etching, which actually will flat out engrave into the metal and you'll feel that roughness and that thickness with it. Uh, and that's really, it gives a much bolder look no matter what angle you're looking at it. Uh, and it just depends what look you're going for. But I like all three depending on the application that I'm doing. So what I'm gonna do is engrave a bottle opener that has the polish, the anneal, and then the etch process all right next to each other so you can very easily see the difference. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to the computer and I will show you that design and we will talk about the settings that I'm gonna use and show you how it turns out. Before I jump into the design side of this, I do wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, Epilog Laser, because without them, Honestly, most of the content that I create wouldn't exist. The machinery I have is because of them and I love using it. I have the Galvo G100 for this video and being able to partner with them and create videos like this to help educate all of you is a great asset to the community. If you're not familiar with Epilogue Laser, go check them out at epiloguelaser.com slash maker dash experiment. You can check out the Galvo machine that I have and all of its technical specs. You can also check out the CO2 lasers that they have, but I've been using their lasers for over a decade and they are always performing day in and day out for me. And I can't speak highly enough of the performance and the ability to run a business with these lasers, it will truly unlock a lot of production capability if you want to take this to the next level. They have a couple of fall specials going on where you can get free accessories and free shipping if you are interested in buying a laser before the end of November. But if you have any questions about Epilogue's machinery, put them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer all of those and get back to you as quickly as I can. Here's the design that I'm gonna be using for my bottle opener. I have used this in the past for past projects. The difference here is I separated it into four different colors. The red is for the outline so I can make sure I line up the artwork properly. In this case, I'm going to be using the blue as my polish process, the black as my annealing process, and then the green as my etch process. The reason I put them in different colors is so that I can set them up in the epilogue software for different settings and I'll show you what that looks like. But this is the design that I'm going to work with. So I went ahead and sent this over to my epilogue dashboard software. On the Galvo, the max I can do is six inches by six inches in a single view with the 254 lens that is installed on my machine. And if you have the 163 lens installed, it would be a four x four. So I tend to keep the 254 installed so I have that wider range. I've already angled the bottle opener. This is a seven inch long bottle opener. I've already put it at the 45 degree angle to be able to engrave the whole thing at once. You'll also see that I've hidden the red and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. What you'll see here is I have the dashboard set up to automatically separate by color. You could also have it automatically separate by hairline. It just depends on how you wanna set it up and your personal preference. In order to turn an operation on or off, if you click on the operation, you'll see a process type and you can select off, engrave, hatch, or vector. 
I selected off, which is what turned the red off. If I had this on as a vector, you will see that it appears and I can line up all of my artwork. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off so that I don't accidentally machine it. And then I wanna set up the blue, black, and green. I've already done this, but if I go into blue, I have a setting if I go to my import settings and I scroll down, I already have a setting for this, which is that F254 stainless steel metal polish. The 254 is the lens indicator so that I know which lens I'm using. I make sure I pick the one associated to that lens. So I click on the polish and click import and it will show me my settings. In the polish case, I'm using a speed of 70, a power of 50, a frequency of 15%, a wave of 15, and then you will see that my spacing is 0.002 and I'm engraving it at a 45 degree angle. When I mentioned before that settings are difficult on a Galvo, no matter what brand you have, that is why. There are just so many variables that play into this and it's really gonna take you some time to figure it out. Now you can get a starting point from the factory and that's great. They may not contain everything. So you're really gonna have to figure out what you wanna do, the look you wanna go for, and then figure out your settings on your own. And you're gonna have to be willing to waste some material and try things out to see what works for you. If I go into my anneal settings, which will be more of that black color, you'll see that it's also a hatch pattern. The speed is 55.56. This is because I chose a generated uh, result, which is why you have that weird percentage. Power is 50%, frequency is 10.5, wave is four, my spacing was 0 0.0001, angle was zero. You might find different settings that achieve the same result, maybe even do it faster, but this is one that I found that worked within the you know three hours or so that I spent trying to figure out what I wanted. For the etch, this one is also a hatch process. Speed is 35%, my power is 75%, frequency is 1%, wave is 10%, my spacing is 0 0.0001, and my angle is 90 degrees. And as you see this machine, you'll see the angle change from one way to another way to another way, and you'll see it come at it from a different angle. It's really interesting to watch. Uh, it also is cool that it kind of sounds like R2-D2 when you're doing it. All of this to say, these settings may work for you. They may not work for you. You may get better results with a completely different setting. And that's okay because there are so many variables, so many options that you can really figure out how to make this your own. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this over to the laser. I will let it machine and I will show you what that looks like. And then we're gonna talk about it a little bit. Now that you've seen the engraving, I want to point out one, one very important thing that I messed up. Do not put wood underneath of the metal when it's engraving because it might catch fire. Don't do it. I can attest. Again, I make just as many mistakes as everybody else. Human error, not thinking through. If I didn't want to mark the bed of my laser, which is why I had the piece of wood under there, I highly recommend you just put a piece of metal under there so that it just engraves it and it doesn't try to catch it on fire. Now, all's good, no damage done, but you did see a little bit of flame up during the process and that's what it was from, so lesson learned. So this is the bottle opener. I'm gonna go from this side over. This is polish. 
the middle is the anneal, and then this side is the edge. So this is the metal polish. You can see it is very bright. It has a white contrast versus the stainless steel. And it really, it really pops, honestly. I really like the way that that looks. I've actually used this polish process underneath of UV printing to give kind of a holographic type feel and look. I really do like how that turns out. Plus, it's a very quick process. Next up, we have the annealing, which is more of a black coloring. It's the same surface depth as the polish, so I can just run my finger across, and you don't really feel it a whole lot. And if you hit the light just right, it will look black. So right here, white versus black, and you kind of have that cool transition. I, that's part of why I wanted to do this, is to see the clear transition. But that gives you the black look that I was going for. The last one is the etch. I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of the etch. There's a couple reasons why. If you try to clean it, you get a little bit of debris that collects in the metal, and it's very hard to clean it off. The second one is, to me, you get the depth, but it's also a lot dirtier. And you can see that it marked the back from ricocheting off the wood, frankly. But it also marked the sides a little bit. It just doesn't give as good of a result as I would like. I actually really prefer the annealing process over the etching process. But I've seen people use the etching process to do things like uh, stone engraving to get a really deep look on stone. I've seen people do it for ice cube molds to engrave a pattern into a mold. I've also seen it in things like knives and stuff like that. It just really depends on what you're going for. But that's the process for engraving stainless steel on the Galvo laser and three different types of engraving that you could do to get three, frankly, very drastic results depending on what you're looking for. My favorite are really the polish and the annealing process. I really like how those turn out. They're very subtle with the depth, and they're also very quick and very clean in the result. The etching is a little bit dirtier and rougher of a process, uh, and it's just not as, I would say, elegant or refined or demure, whatever that trending thing was. But I really wanted to highlight how you can get three very different results with the same exact material if you're playing with settings. Now, if you go into metals like titanium, you can get some color if you have a MOPA laser. And if you go to, say, brass or copper, understanding how a polish will look versus an annealing versus an etch. You might want to do etch for like a challenge coin if you want to paint fill it because you can get some real depth to that. If you want it to be, you know, metal engraving only, you might want to do a polish or an annealing process. It really just depends on the look you're going for and what you want to achieve. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If it has, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. Be sure to check out my Instagram, Actmaker Experiment, where I share things along the way. But I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.